A very, very good evening and thank you all for joining us today. I know we're going through a little bit of a crisis situation, not a little bit, probably a lot. We hope that you and your loved ones are very, very safe. Today, we're going to be doing a workshop on unleashing your warrior goddess power. And we've got with us Heather Ashamara, who's an international best-selling author and a public figure. In this session, we're going to learn some very, very needed skills, very important skills for today in terms of how to stay centered, creative, and deepen our relationships. This is a hands-on and it's an immersive session. There are going to be a lot of exercises to help you. Learning how to be a fantastic cheerleader and ally and support to yourself is what will make you a warrior goddess, a beacon of light. Then you can shine your love, your peace and compassion on everyone around you because you will be standing in the center of your being, connected, confident and compassionate to yourself and others. And as Heather Ash says, unleashing your warrior goddess power. Heather Ash Amara is dedicated to inspiring depth, creativity and joy by sharing the most potent tools from a variety of world traditions. She is the author of the best-selling Warrior Goddess training series, The Seven Secrets to a Happy and Healthy Relationship, which she did with Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. and the Warrior Heart Practice. She lives in Santa Fe and travels and teaches internationally. Today in conversation and hosting the session with her will be Jalpa Vitalani, who's a businesswoman, a farmer, an artist, a curator, a social worker. She is one of the handful of reconnective healing foundation practices in India. Jalpa founded the Cosmic Heart Gallery, which is a space dedicated to offering exquisite art collections. She is the vice president of Western India Foriculture Association. She's also a philanthropist. She works closely with BPW International, which is the lar largest organization in the world empowering women and the NGO Humans for Humanity as their director of operations. Jalpa was recently recognized with the Women Empowerment Principles Leadership Award by Asia One 2020-21 and the United Nations Development Corporation. This event, we're very, very excited to bring to you. It's brought to you by Sipping Thoughts, by Cosmic Heart Gallery, by Humans for Humanity, Yogi Impressions, and Hierophant Publishing. So first of all, a very, very warm welcome, Jalpa and Heather. And of course, we've got with us Anurag also from Humans for Humanity. So welcome to all three of you. We're excited to have you with us tonight. Hello. So just to kick us off, Jalpa, and I know this question always comes up. So what is reconnective healing? Please tell us a little bit about that before we move into the session today. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, yes, Keithi, uh, that's something, you know, I'm quite passionate about. It's a very new age healing. And the reconnective healing experience actually transforms our minds, bodies, and hearts and accelerates life progress in ways that may otherwise seem impossible, if I may say. Every healing contributes to the consciousness, to the coherence and harmony of your life, of your family, your community and the planet. And in this global pause, which we are all experiencing, what's nice is that distance healings are possible. It's a three way process and the practitioner is also in receiving mode. What we're actually doing is bringing energy, light and information on the planet. Well, thank you for telling us that because I know it is a new word, at least for me, and I'm also trying to understand reconnective healing. But I know everybody is very excited to get started with the session. So, Jalpa, over to you. Well, it gives me great joy to be here in conversation today with the real life goddess, Hedrash Amara. The best way that I can describe Hedrash to you, my friends, is quite simply a force and a movement. She fosters a global community that supports authenticity, awareness, and awakening. And when we bring our attention back to discovering who we are on the inside, not whom we wish we were or whom we think we should be, I think we all begin a sacred path of transformation towards our innate, authentic, and embodied power. Today, through this conversation and workshop, we are embarking on a journey together, my friends, which ignites the goddess in each of us. Hethrash is the author of a number of books like Sukirti has shared, including the international bestseller Warrior Goddess Training Series. It's an honor to have the publishers on board with us for this event, Hierophant and Yogi Impressions, Randy Devella and Gautam Sachdeva. 
Hetrash, you know, it was so wonderful. It was a privilege to have your book launch at Cosmic Heart Gallery in January 2019 with my dear friends Gautam Sachdev, the founder of Yogi Impressions, and Devika Khanna. It was great to have you in India then, and I'm so grateful to Gautam that our paths crossed, and I believe more and more people are reading your book during these unusual times. For those of you who haven't read Warrior Goddess Training, this book actually enthralls you, it engages you, it holds you through the process of transformation. So Hedrash, on that note, I, it would be lovely to hear how you felt about being in India uh, in person the last time with us at your book launch. And what's the one message that you would like to give to this amazing group to set the stage for this evening? Mm, thank you so much, Jalpa, and to everyone that helped put this event together and everyone that's joining us today. And it was such a huge honor for me to be in India for the book launch of Warrior Goddess Training in India. Um, gosh, how to describe, really, I've been dancing with India, with Mother India for many, many years. I first went to India when I was seven years old with my family and have had a deep heart connection. And so to be able to share everything that I've learned, all the gifts with a country, with a people that are so, so dear to my heart was uh, really a miracle in a lot of ways. And to get to meet you, Jalpa, and everyone that was there. And I'd say that the, the biggest thing that I wanna to share today, and we're gonna to do a lot of uh, really specific exercises is that we are in a really rough time. And I know, especially for those of you that are in India, it's, it's incredibly intense right now. And so I wanna just share that there are many people outside of India that are praying and holding and that are, you know, my prayer is that we as humans may come out of this experience with more compassion and love and creativity of how connected we all are. I think we're really seeing that at a very deep level of the connection. So thank you. That's beautiful, Hezrash. And, uh, you know, I think uh, it would be lovely if we could start with a nice grounding exercise with you so that we are all fully present with you. And also something which will be a tool to enable us to remain centered at all times. Yeah. So this is a very simple grounding practice that you can do anytime. And if you start by closing your eyes, oh, the sun just came out here. Ha -ha. Yeah. Go ahead and close your eyes and take a breath into your belly. And using your imagination, which is one of the most powerful tools that we have as humans, imagining that you can send roots down through the earth beneath you. And I like to visualize my spine and then imagine that you can sink your tailbone down into the earth and spread roots out. And using your imagination, just breathing and visualizing that you're moving your roots down through the soil, all the way down into earth. Even if you're in an apartment complex on the 20th floor, you can send your energetic roots all the way down and imagine those roots sinking down and spreading out. And as you send those roots into the earth, you're inviting your body to connect with the wisdom of the earth and also the energy of the earth. So imagine your roots sinking down through all the different layers, down through sand and clay, and even through the bedrock. So as you imagine your roots finding cracks and crevices through the bedrock, sink those roots all the way down to the very center of the earth. And imagine this big ball of energy, this beautiful heart, of the mother at the center of the earth and that you can wrap your roots around this energ energetic ball and invite energy so imagine that you can pull from the center of the earth with gratitude bringing up extra energy extra vitality extra connection so you can imagine that as a vibration as a color as a feeling sense so with every inhale pulling energy up from the earth and imagining that energy moving up through your roots, through the bedrock, through the different layers. 
with every inhalation, breathing this energy, this vital force up through soil, up through the foundation of whatever building you're in, all the way up into your body. So feeling that connection from the center of the earth through your roots and now breathing this energy up through the trunk of your body, up through your core, and imagining that your body is the trunk of a tree, flexible but steady, pulling this energy all the way up through your body and then out your crown, out into branches. So visualizing your branches going wide to sky, opening to space, to the energy of the sun, the moon, the stars, the cosmos. And as we open to this place of possibility that we're opening to our intuition, to our own guidance, and imagine now that you can pull energy from sky down through your branches, let it move through your body and down into earth. Just take a breath, really mindful. Inhale from earth, up through your body, out to sky. And then exhale from sky, down through your body, into earth. And then do that one more time of connecting earth to sky and sky to earth through your body. Beautiful. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes and be present here. And just noticing if you feel a sense of connection. That was a brief version. You can do, do this for much longer and you'll find a sense of centeredness. That was powerful, yes, Rash. And you know, as and my friends, I'm sure you found, you know, you've learned something which is such a simple tool. Uh, I, I'm feeling very, very present. I'm feeling very expanded and whole. Thank you, thank you. And uh, moving on, yes, Rash. Uh, I know that you've had a life-changing experience when you visited India with your parents as a little child, and I know that this audience would love to hear about it. <laughs> Absolutely. So I grew up in Southeast Asia, Hong Kong, Singapore, Thailand. We moved around a lot as a kid. We went, we traveled every year. And so when I was seven years old, we were in India. And I remember I was holding my dad's hand. We were walking down the street. And the thing I was most concerned about in that moment was my shoes, because I had white sandals. And I remember worrying that they were going to get dirty. So that's where my head was. And I look up and there's a seven-year-old girl walking towards me. And I remember she had really scraggly hair. She was in rags, she was barefoot. And as we walked towards each other, we made eye contact and everything disappeared except for her. And I had this experience of pure love, pure connection, the understanding that the separateness that we create as humans of I'm different from you, or that there's difference between um, cultures, country, like all of everything disappeared. And in that moment, which was very brief because we crossed and then of course I never saw her again. Yeah. My life was entirely changed. And I forgot about that experience not too long afterwards. And it took me many years to come back to, to remember that moment. And that really my life has been a striving to get back to that place of really cosmic realization of the oneness of all of us. And so that's been my, my life path is reconnecting and bringing in really solid tools to help us to remember who we really are. How beautiful. <clears throat> Thank you for sharing that. 
and uh, you know i know that uh, you've also been uh, exposed to a very rich blend of world traditions right right from toltec wisdom to european shamanism buddhism and the native american ceremony how has this impacted your teachings and writings hetherash mm i've been blessed with so many beautiful guides and mentors and all all of them have given a different piece of yeah. wisdom of understanding and so the the gift of being open to what are where are the best tools so i I'm, i'm both in a tradition of the the toltec lineage through mexico and i'm also very open to the incredible gift we have at this time to many different tools from psychology to ancient spiritual traditions to um movies like all of it is resources for us yes. to help us to settle yeah yeah it's wonderful because you bring such an open hearted inclusive world view you know to your writings and teachings from all of this and uh, i i also uh, know that the heart of your teachings comes from toltec wisdom and the toltecs are a group of people my friends uh, for those of you who don't know who come from south and central mexico they consider themselves as artists of the spirit and the toltec path is one of personal freedom the freedom to choose how we want to create our inner and outer world through our perceptions and intent and i love how don miguel ruiz describes the real mission that you have in life is to make yourself happy So how did your question with happiness change Hetherash after you immersed yourself in Toltec traditions and one step further any tips that you have for this group on increasing the happiness quotient for all of us for each of us Absolutely what i found when i first started doing uh the Toltec work is that my spiritual path my healing path had been compromised by my own judgment and that many of us are raised in a a system of reward and punishment if you do it right you get a reward if you do it wrong you get punished and especially i know in the united states i'm assuming this is somewhat true in india as well that there's a a temptation for us to judge ourselves towards our healing to compare ourselves to think i should be in a different place i should not be this person uh the place where we compare ourselves we criticize ourselves uh and that instead of really cheerleading supporting inspiring ourselves forward a lot i know this was my experience i was punishing myself yeah. of i should be different and so that shifted everything because the truth is you can use everything against yourself yeah or you can use everything in support of yourself and that is one of the most powerful inner transformations we have. So for me, I'm happy most of the time now even when it's really challenging, there's a sense of peace and joy and connection. Yes. Because I know this will pass. Yes. And it's there's beauty in everything. You know, my heart's breaking right now for what's happening around the world, and I also am am curious about will this help us as humans? love each other even more fiercely on the other side. Yes. Lovely, lovely. And you know it's 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 no secret that women today are multitasking, they're juggling so much, right? We're busier than ever before putting the needs of others before our own and sometimes we all feel so overwhelmed by it. And like you rightly said, you know, many of us uh at some point have learned to be our own worst critic rather than being our own best friend. So you know uh my next question is how can we remove these layers of expectations you know that we as women have built around ourselves and move into a more neutral space in our relationships There's a a place of there's a really beautiful Toltec quote of you can choose to make yourself miserable or you can choose to be a warrior and the okay. amount of energy is the same Okay And so I always look at the difference between judgment and discernment Okay. So when we're judging something, part of what is woven into judgment is that that's not this it shouldn't be this way. It's my fault, it's their fault. Blame, shame, guilt. 
is woven into judgment and the places we use judgment against ourselves or against other people. And discernment is really different. Discernment is, I don't like that action or that's not working for me. There is an energy. We don't have to make someone wrong or bad. Yes. We can simply say that's not working for me. And so the cleanliness, we can say the energetic cleanliness, my work is all about energy. Yes. And the biggest energy we expend is usually self-judgment or wanting the world to be different or life to be different or our partners to be different or whatever. And that just, it takes a tremendous amount of energy. True. We need energy to make choices. Like, how do you make a, a new choice when you have energy available? You know, I always see it that there's this obstacle in life, whatever that obstacle is, and that if we have less energy than the obstacle, then the obstacle seems insurmountable. If we have the same or more energy, then we, then we get creative. Absolutely. So discernment allows us to be able to name what's working and what's not working and have the energy available then to make a new choice or have a conversation or make a boundary or realize this isn't where I should be putting my energy. Lovely. So here's a, a really beautiful, really simple way to do this is just put your finger up in front of your face and look at your finger really, really intensely and just notice how everything else gets blurred out. And then shift your perspective to look at the world around you and you'll see that your finger gets blurred out. And that capacity that we have to shift our literal perception, you can just play with that, a focus on your finger, focus on the world. We can begin to do the same thing to shift our attention to away from judgment towards discernment. And what does discernment feel like in my body? It's another thing that I find really helpful is sometimes your mind, the mind is not the friend because yeah. the mind is doing the judgment, the criticism, the living in the past, the worrying about the future mm. and to, to drop into the body, into this moment, into stillness and open and to ask what does discernment feel like versus what does judgment feel like? And that can help us to catch, oh, I'm in judgment because I have that buzzy, yucky, collapsed yes. feeling in my body. Yes, you feel or that. I'm in discernment. Yes. Lovely. Yeah. Yes, you're right. Uh, you know, discernment can make you feel very expansive. And I think the body is the best barometer, right? It never lies. The mind can play monkey, but the body would never lie. That was beautiful, Hedrash. Thank you so much, you know, for explaining it all so simply. And, uh, you know, you're, you have such a beautiful and unusual name. I've always meant to ask you, what does it mean? Yes, I was born Heather okay. and my nickname was Ash for many oh. years. I'm a firewalk instructor. So I lead people across the coals as a transformational experience. It's amazing. We'll bring it to India. I mean, it started at India. So it's something on the equinox, right? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so because I have such a love of fire, uh, my friends started calling me Ash. And so okay. one day I decided to bring those two together. Yeah. And it feels, it, that feels like me, like that connection of Heather, which is a connection to my Scottish background okay. and Ash, which is my present. For me, Ash is, is uh, transformation. It's the willingness to let go. It's the purification process. Lovely. And that's what you're bringing to everybody's lives, transformation. And, you know, in such simple tools and such simple ways. Lovely. You know, I think something which you've already touched upon in this conversation is that uh, regardless of our circumstances resides a clear pool of joy, an unbreakable connection to our wholeness, to our inner being. And, you know, with so much happening around us, how can we move away from fear, from stuck energy, get creative and flow? I'm wondering if you can, again, journey us through a nice, simple exercise for this group. Yes, absolutely. So this is what I call the creative intent exercise. And it's, it's one of the ways I teach it is with a partner so that you're doing it together, but you can also do it on your own. And here's the, the method, super simple again. So 
that you think about an issue or a very specific issue or problem that you're dealing with right now. And it can be anything. It can okay. be around the pandemic. It can be around a relationship. It can be around your own spiritual path. It can be around health, anything. And then you write that down on a piece of paper. And then you give yourself permission. And this is the key. You give yourself permission to brainstorm 10 ideas that are completely out of the box wacky. So you might do like, here's, a, here's an idea of, of something that's very specific, but you, what you're going for is inviting your mind to expand out of its box of what, where it would usually go. And in order to do that, you're brainstorming incredibly crazy, unrealistic, is never gonna work ideas. Mm -hmm. Now the brain immediately goes, well, why would I do that? Yeah. Here's why is because the right answer, the answer that is actually, will actually be a miracle will drop in. It might not be anything that you've listed, but what you've done is just exploded your brain open. And can I, and what happens is you reconnect, I believe with spirit, with your own wisdom, because now you're, I'm an open channel and then the information comes in. So I'll give an example. And this is a really simple example, but you'll see how it works. So, um, Imagine if you have a teenage son that you're having a hard time getting out of bed in the morning. So this, you can see it can be super practical. And so you start brainstorming ideas and you might come up with very like mundane examples, but you also want to stretch into really crazy examples. So maybe you buy him an alarm clock that they have ones that jump off and roll around. And so he has to get out of bed to turn the alarm clock off. Or you have his sister dump ice in his bed every morning or you buy him an alarm clock and say, I'm never waking you up again. Good luck, kid. I hope you graduate from high school. <laughs> or you hire a marching band to come under his window every morning and play super, super loud until he gets out of bed, okay? So you're probably not gonna hire the marching band, but by coming up with different ideas, really out of the box ideas, you'll come up with an answer. And I, I wanna share, Jop, I think this is pretty funny because that, the the last brainstorm yeah um when my parents lived in india yes. my mom said people were coming around constantly to ask for money yeah. here are some foreigners yeah. you know like yes. and and my mom said i never gave anybody money except for one group and it was the group that came it was a band that would come at five in the morning and play really bad music <laughs> and my mom gave them money to go away oh, and i was like that's <laughs> genius <laughs> That's great. You know, I'm wondering if everybody in the group, I'm sure you might have a pen and paper, maybe even if you don't have time to list 10 things, because I think we're all holding space as a group. I will invite you to take your mobile if you don't have a pen and paper, think of something which is bothering you at this time and come up with these fun, outrageous solutions as Hethrash has taught us. So we're going to give you a minute. So Kirti, if we can give everybody a minute or two minutes to do this right now. And remember, you have unlimited money, you can go to outer space, you can invite, like anything goes, anything goes. That was like a nice pregnant silence. <laughs> so maybe later, you know, when we move into the question and answers, if somebody would like to share their experience, uh, you know, they're most welcome to do that. And uh, Hethrash, you know, we're witnessing a huge change in the feminine rising in India. And I think, in fact, in all over the world. And this group now is like torchbearers, you know, taking the message of the warrior goddess power to their homes, to their families. Can you show us the path 
to our inner warrior goddess in a few simple steps. Absolutely. So I'm going to, this is where we're going to do some movements. Um, but I want to start with it, that these two energies are two qualities. And for me, like the work is, is directed towards women, but it also is for all genders. I've had lots of, of male friends that have read the book and, and, and we're like, everyone should read this. So the warrior energy is clarity, focus, intent. It's that 100% commitment. And your, the goddess energy is about openness, creativity, flow, receptivity. So there's these two energies that we all contain and that the warrior goddess work is not about, let me get 50% warrior and 50% goddess and then I can check it off and I'm done. Mm. Okay. It's not about that. I have to have it equal, actually. Okay. It's about learning what is my experience, what is my essence of warrior and goddess because they're on a continuum. Okay. So one, we want to learn to use both energies. There's times when you need that warrior clarity focus. And there's times that you need that receptivity, openness, creativity in your, your life and also in relationship to other people. As we explore what our essence is, some of us are more warrior oriented. That's what our light, our inner light is more warrior. Some of us are more goddess oriented. Some of us are right in the middle. But what we want to pay attention to yeah. is that all of us have taken on shells, what I call shells, that are, I'm supposed to be more warrior. And so we take a shell on, or my family was more goddess oriented. And so we take that shell on. And, and again, that, that goddess energy and the warrior energy, they're fluid in a way. And so we want to learn where is a place that I've taken on either of these energies more as an armor or a protection or because I think I'm supposed to okay. versus this is my essence. Yes. Okay. So let me show, and you can feel this in your body. And I was laughing, we were laughing earlier because I'm like, I still have my pajama bottoms on because it's <laughs> 7.30 in the morning here. So you get to see this. <laughs> so if you can stand up for a second, pajama bottoms, if you can stand up for a second and I'll show you the warrior and goddess energy. Just connect this here. Okay, so warrior energy is this. You wanna bend your knees. And you bring your hands out and right here. So 100% focus. And I like making a sound with it. So you're coming into alignment, 100% focus. So one more time. Good. And then notice what you feel in your body. And we can share this in a moment. But just close your eyes and just notice with that warrior energy, how do you feel? What do you feel in your body? Okay. And then let's do the goddess energy. And the goddess energy is this. So it's this open, again. You can settle in again. Good. And one more time. And then you can do a little wiggle at the end too. So settling in. Good. And again, closing your eyes, checking in. How do you feel with that goddess energy? All right. Thank you, Heather Ash. That was lovely. Mm -hmm. And I love your pajamas. <laughs> They're good, huh? <laughs> yes, yes. So, you know, uh, friends, uh, Hetrash fosters a worldwide community, an amazing warrior goddess training circle. So I'm going to invite her to share something more about it. I think many of you in the audience would love to hear about it. I know that it's a space where women are celebrated, they are supported as they align, and where we as women have the opportunity to let our authenticity shine. Over to you, Hezrash. Mm, thank you, sweetheart. So we have a couple of things. One is we have a Warrior Goddess Women Facebook group that, that we have a lot of support and um, 
teachings that are part of that group. So that is one place. It's a great place to plug in with us. And then we also have a warrior goddess training circle. And right now it's closed. We're in the, in the process of shifting some things. But when it opens up again, where, what that is, is it's all of the best of my teachings through video and um, audio, a lot of visualizations, a lot of really practical tools what I think of as the eagle eye and the, the jaguar. So the eagle is a big picture view and the jaguar is how do we take action in the world? Goddess warrior, <laughs> there it is again. And so that circle also has live classes that happen weekly with, with our warrior goddess mentors. So we'll be opening that at some point in the future. So you can come play with us. But for now, if you want to join the Warrior Goddess Women Facebook group, you'll get a taste of the community and the amount of support and guidance that's available through these particular teachings. Lovely, lovely. And uh, Hezrash, any future plans that you would like to share with this audience? Oh my gosh, so many. Um, I'm, I'll be traveling again soon. I mean, once we can all move, Again, I do a lot of, of live events. So that's something else that's coming up. Uh, and the other thing I'm really excited about is my podcast. So I've been interviewing women about their journey and their experiences. So that's another great place to plug in and to learn more about, about the teachings. The, the other big, big thing that I'm working on right now is I, am, uh, I just bought a couple years ago 180 acres of land. I don't know how many hectares. It's like, it's a lot of land <laughs> uh, and it's up against national forest. And so what I've been doing during the pandemic is building a house wow. that's a retreat center for the community. So we've actually been building it out of Adobe uh, and Adobe is mud mixed with sand in a particular uh, concentration. Uh, and what's been beautiful is that there was an old building there that we tore down. And so we've been using the Adobe mud to rebuild the building. It's going to be a community kitchen, and then we'll we'll have uh, offerings and and journeys of people can come there to get fed and nourished. So that's been really a huge gift, and I've learned so much about life just through building something brick by brick, literally making the bricks and then building the building. So you oh, can wonderful. follow me on Instagram to to see about that because I've been sharing the the journey on Instagram. Wonderful. You know, I, I can't wait to uh, really visit this new retreat in uh, New Mexico, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. it's in New Mexico. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And also, you know, witness whatever new work is going to unravel through you. And, you know, I think we have a little time. So I was wondering if you can do a, a, maybe a small meditation or another exercise with the group. Absolutely. I would love to. So let's do uh, visualizations. If you can close your eyes and put one hand on your heart and one hand on your belly. And just say to yourself out loud or internally, hi, sweetheart. Hi, sweetheart, I'm here. Because so often as women, especially, we have a tendency to abandon ourselves, to put our, our entire attention outside. So just come home to yourself for a moment. Hi, sweetheart. <sighs> And asking yourself, asking the wisdom of your heart, the knowing of your belly, what do you need right now? So to ask your being, hi, sweetheart, what do you need right now? What do you need more of? And allow a word to emerge. So there be, may be a lot of words, but let yourself settle into what's one quality your being could use more of at this time. What's one quality your being could use more of at this time? And find that quality and then bring it into a feeling sense. Bring it into your body right now. So if that's stillness or enthusiasm or peace, Whatever the word is, more love, bring that feeling sense into your body now. Breathing that in.
And asking the wisdom of your being, what one action can you take in your life to help you bring this quality in more? To, to feel this quality in your daily life. What's one little action? Make it a little bitty action that you can take. Let the wisdom of your body speak to you to give you one small action that you can take to help you to integrate this quality more in your daily life. Beautiful. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. And if you want to go in sh ahead and share in the chat what that quality is, what that word is, we can then support each other energetically in deepening into that. Strength. Beautiful. Yeah, mine was calm. The word calm. Yeah, love, happiness, sleep, rest, good, peace, acceptance, love, beautiful. Yeah. And so how do we craft that in our lives more? So you can really start to look in, you know, even for, for those of us that are, are quarantined and that, you know, our house is our entire world, you can play with how do I embody joy? What do I need? What can I do? Uh, and, and just experiment, explore. And I want to share one thing, because I think we have time, and I know we're going to have time for questions as well, is that because we're in such an extreme time right now, and there's a lot of fear in the collective, there's a lot of upset, there's a lot of grief, and it's not about separating ourselves from that completely. Not, it's not about armoring and not feeling. So I want to just be clear that this idea of joy isn't I'm going to push the grief down or I'm going to push my fear down so I can have joy. It's about opening beyond, like understanding we're going to have fear. The body's going to have fear. There's going to be grief at this time that we can open bigger than those things to also include peace, to also include love. And here's an extreme this will resonate with some of you and some of you will be like, what is she talking about? But one of the things that I've found to be incredibly helpful when I'm in really difficult situations is to give myself permission to go to worst case scenario. What's the worst, 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 worst that can happen here? And we're seeing a lot of the worst case scenarios right now. But when I personally give myself permission to say, let's go to the worst case scenario and that I can then accept that doesn't mean it's going to happen. It doesn't mean I'm wanting it to happen. But when I can go all the way to my personal worst case scenario and go, okay, okay. What it does is it then allows me to be creative in the moment because I'm no longer trying to fight the worst case scenario. I'm just like, that could happen, period. But that's one of a thousand things could happen. Let me go now towards creativity. Let me go towards compassion. Let me allow myself to have the grief and open into, again, the fullness of being human, which is all of it. So for, for you know, I just hope there's somebody out there that that could be beneficial to. Yeah, and the acknowledgement helps build strength, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was wonderful, you know, that was very real and relevant to what all of us are facing actually at this time, you know. So, you know, to be a warrior goddess, my friends, is actually to be free from the inside, to be expansive, like Hedraj said, you know, from the, uh, from the inside. And we're all here on the planet to discover our authentic selves, you know. So let's be committed to that, to finally become the women that we are really meant to be. The world doesn't need us to play small any longer. And it's time for our self-doubt to end for good and for each of us to own our warrior goddess power. On that note, I would love to open the floor to questions. I'm sure many of you have uh, many things that you would love to uh, chat with, uh, you know, to ask Heather Ash. Yeah, 
So, Keeti, uh, it would be yeah. that. I, uh, yeah, thank you, Heather. I want to ask you one question because this is something that we are all actually facing. A lot of grief, like you talked about, and a lot of helplessness. So, both yes. are really, you know, I think almost contagious because at the moment, if I look at my WhatsApp chats, those are the two emotions that are really, really coming out. What can we do about that? Especially this feeling of helplessness. I cannot do anything. I cannot find a hospital bed. I cannot find an oxygen tank. You know, I mean, this is that real feeling of helplessness. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So to acknowledge the feeling, like I always start with, let me acknowledge the feeling in my body let me acknowledge the grief. Let me acknowledge the feeling sense of helplessness. So to start there, to name, I feel helpless right now. And to, to say, hi, sweetheart, I see you. I see you. And then to, to choose, okay, I acknowledge the helplessness. I see the helplessness and that feeling sense. And where do I want to put my attention? What's the quality that I want to bring in? So we're, again, we're not denying the grief or denying the helplessness. We're honoring it. We're owning it. And then we're saying, and where do I want to put my attention? And in that way, you're holding the, I always think, see it this way, like you're holding hands with the grief or the helplessness. And you're saying, I see you, sweetheart. And then you're saying, and I'm holding hands with courage. I'm holding hands with fierceness. I'm holding hands with being the best advocate I can be. I'm holding hands with creating love in this moment, whatever it is. And so then we have more capacity to feel into what's my next step. And we're again, connected to spirit. So when it's something as even as physical as how do I get oxygen for my grandmother? Okay that we can then honor the helplessness. I mean, just feel it, name it, acknowledge it, and then say, I'm bringing in courage, or I'm bringing in fierceness, or I'm bringing in my love for my grandmother. And spirit, where do I go? What's the next step? Because the human self can get connected to doing things without doing it effectively, we can say, or without knowing what the next action is. So we're just taking action. It, when we drop in and get really still and ask spirit to help us, then what I've seen over and over again is that then we're guided in mysterious ways. Go here, call this person. And the brain's like, why would I call this person? That makes no sense. And you call that person, they're like, go here. So to, to start to open to our intuitive capacity means acknowledging what's happening in our bodies now and the the experience that we're having, getting clear about where do I want to put my attention and energy, and then listening, making, taking actions from that place of listening. And even in the very mundane of being in our homes and not being able to leave, we can do the same thing of, all right, intuitively opening to what's my practice here? How do I hold this grief in a new way? How do I learn to keep my energetic self clean as there's a lot of fear around me and that we can be guided. I mean, luckily I just am so prayerful that we're still connected by the internet and that we have these tools. And so we can then drop into, okay, okay, sweetheart to ourselves. Okay. Spirit, I want to learn this thing. And then we open our being and then we find it on YouTube or we find a group to get to join that will lead us to that next stage in our evolution. Thank you. So the first question we'll take from Mudit. Mudit, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Heather Ash, for your positivity. So my question is, why is this feeling of connectedness or oneness fleeting? I've experienced it, but it's very fleeting. And secondly, added to that is when you're disconnected from the world and meditating, then you feel everything is peaceful. Once you're engaged with the world, then it's a whole new ball game. So frankly, sometimes, you know, you have to flip between these two worlds. Uh, your advice, Heather. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Such great questions. I see this as a dance that we all have had a taste. Everyone here has had a taste of that sense of connection, of that union, of that oneness. And it is difficult to stabilize. 
So we get a taste of it. Here's what I, here's how I see it. We get a taste of it. The universe is like, sweetheart, remember? And we're like, yes, I remember. I know what that peace feels like. And then boom, we're back in our human experience. We're disconnected. We're scared. We're struggling. We're striving. We're comparing our, like we're doing all the things. And that, that sense of oneness, that, that connection is a paradox. And it takes a while for our being to be able to open wide enough to hold all the paradox of what it means to be a human in a human body and to also be spirit. And we can, we can fight that journey and feel frustrated that it takes so long or that I've tasted it and now I'm not tasting it. And, or we can go, journey, I'm in for the long haul with myself as long as it takes to bring these things together. Because it takes a, a stretching of ourselves beyond what we've known. And that just takes time. And yes, every once in a while, someone is born, you know, India knows this more than any place, is born enlightened, is born in that open-hearted, wide space. But that's rare or has a sudden awakening. It happens. It happens. And it's rare. It doesn't mean it's not going to happen to us. It could. It could at any moment. That's just the truth. It could at any moment. And until that happens, we want to build the, the, the space and the stage for that grace, because there's nothing we can do to make it happen. It is grace. It is the ripening of our being, this lifetime or the next lifetime. And so to enjoy the journey of the dismantling and the rebuilding, and that the, the place that you're talking about too around, you know, I can meditate and get super still and have that thing and then I wake up and I go into the world and I'm triggered immediately. That we're learning again to hold that sense of peace that we find when we're in nature or when we're on the cushion or when we're with our grandchild, whatever, wherever we get, we have that experience. We're learning how to stabilize that as we move in the world. And it takes practice. It takes practice and support and guidance and being around other people that are doing the same work and finding the joy in doing it. So that's the, the biggest thing I would say is that when we, when we let go of the striving of I want it to happen now or why is it not happening and look at, here's another way to think about it is what's a, what's a better question or what's a more supportive question? How Thank do I you. support myself Yes. Moving forward. Very, very well said. Yes. We'll take the next question from Hina Sharma. Go ahead, Hina. Hi. Thank you, everyone. I'm so glad I joined this platform. <laughs> uh, Heather, your energy is amazing. I am like just too happy that I could make, make it here. I can feel Heather's energy in my palm, and all the exercises that we have done were amazing. Like, I have a question, Heather Ash. How can we deal with an obstacle or blockage that we can feel, but we cannot see? It's like, because I'm into energy work and energy healing too, what happens is at times I know, I just know that there is some obstacle, but I cannot see it. So if I don't see it, I don't know what to do about it or how to deal with it. So how do we go about things like that? Yeah, it's a great question. What I like to do in situations like that is to really ask to, to, to do a couple things. So one, start in the body. Where is it in my body? Where do I feel the blockage? Where do I feel the obstacle? Is it in my belly? Is it in my heart? Is it in my hands? And so to start there by feeling into the physical form of how big is it? How heavy? What does it feel like? And that'll give us a sense of where it lives in our body, which is, it can be helpful. And then from there, once I have that anchor in my body, to then open to where does this manifest outside of me? And you don't have to have the specifics. So here's the thing about healing is you don't need to know where something came from. It doesn't, it, it's great to know where it came from, but you don't need to know where it came from. You really don't. 
So sometimes I find I did this for myself where I'm like, I have to know where this happened or whose fault this is. All you need to know is I've got a blockage and then to ask, how is this manifesting in the world? And you'll start to see then in, in the subtle ways of, oh, I my heart is closed. And I feel that same feeling when I'm feeling jealous about somebody else's success. I'm making stuff up now. Okay. Or I feel this same feeling when um, I start, start um, worrying about what's going to happen in the future. And then you, can, then you can ask, what's the agreement that's holding this in place? So obstacles are emotional, energetic in the body, and they also are connected to agreements, particular agreements that we make with ourselves and with the universe, or that we take on from our ancestors. So this is why I'm saying sometimes you're not going to know exactly where it came from. And there's a lot of, you know, different modalities that you can find out. But what I found is if you're dedicated to clearing it, you're either going to find the modality that'll pop it for you or you're going to realize, oh, it happens in this moment. What's the agreement? And if you can go underneath what's happening here. Okay, so and go underneath. So I'll just give a really brief example that um, I have always I had always wanted to write a book. And I kept getting blocked and I didn't know why. So the obstacle was I wasn't doing it. I was I had fear, but I couldn't I couldn't understand what was going on. I didn't even understand that. And one day I was in a bookstore and I was super happy, like my heart was exploded. And I was like, look at all these books. This is my favorite place in the entire world right? And I was watching my, like I, my practice, and this is what I invite all of us to do, was what I call stalking ourselves. So you're watching your emotions, you're paying attention to what's happening in your body. So I went and sat in my car and I checked my body before I took off and I realized I felt hopeless, low energy, depressed, defeated. And I was like, what just happened? And when I felt it in my body, I then tracked and I was like, what happened? I went back to standing in front of the bookshelf and all the books. And what I heard was this voice and the voice in my head was my voice was saying, look at all these books. All these books have been written already. There's nothing you can contribute. Why do you even think you can be a writer? And I didn't need to know where that came from. I was like, oh, I want to show, come and show. there's an agreement. Yeah. Do I want to live from that agreement? Do I want to live from every book has already been written? Or do I want to refocus myself to, even if nobody ever write, reads a book that I write, I'm going to write a book. And look what happened. If I hadn't caught that, I may have never written a book. So it's that combo of list, pay attention to what's going on in the body, where the obstacle is. What's the agreement? Refocus. Is that the agreement that you want to keep? Where do you want to put your attention? I hope that helps. The last question, sorry, because we're running out of time. Yes, I know, so, I see. From Som Datta Majumdar, go ahead. Thank you so much. And thank you, Heather Ash, for this wonderful seminar. And it's really helpful to us right now. So my question is that uh, in the pandemic, a lot of people, including me, we feel very emotionally numb. And we can't feel happy or sad or angry anymore. And we, and I myself found myself uh, not really feeling the pain or the the pain of others. And I felt really guilty about that. So, uh, how do we overcome this kind of uh, terrible numbness? Mm, oh, thank you for sharing that sh story, sweetheart. First, be so gentle with yourself. So gentle. You're in shock. You know, so people are either feeling everything or they're feeling nothing. And your body's trying to navigate something that is horrific, right? So to be gentle, like, oh, sweetie, I know this is hard. Okay, so change the self-dialogue. And then one thing that's really helpful, I would say music and movement. So every day, put on music and let your body move and give yourself permission to feel whatever's there. And you can say 10 minutes body, you can feel whatever you want to feel. And it may be for the next 10 days, you feel nothing. Keep going. Because your emotional body, it needs an invitation and it's, you're scared to feel. But if you give yourself that permission of, of be gentle and be loving with yourself and move, move, move so that you can create flow in your energetic body again, because part of what happens is, is the emotional body is like, if I start feeling, I'm never going to stop feeling. 
or it's too much. But if you give yourself that container of movement and, and music, it'll help your, your body go, oh, she's going to help me move this energy. And there'll be a pathway. So there's one, one way to work with it, sweetheart. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're so welcome. Yeah. Well, how quickly an hour goes by. And I know, Heather, we've always already asked this, but we're going through such troubled times. Any last words that you would like to leave us with? Mm. This, this place of hand on your heart, hand on your belly, breathe every day, multiple times a day. Come back to yourself. Listen. What does this being need? And, and take little baby actions. Sometimes we, especially when we're overwhelmed, we don't know what to do. And so if we can come back, little action. What's my next little baby step? And then once you take the little baby step, totally celebrate. Yay! And also find places where you, where you feel connected and held. So in the, you know, please come join the Warrior Goddess Women Facebook group, and, and hopefully you'll, you can stay connected to us and to all the beautiful resources here, Jalpa and her work, which is so powerful, the uh, Sukirti and her beautiful Sipping Thoughts, all the support and resources that are here, keep plugging in uh, and just know that there are beings, and you might be one of these beings that are holding rooted, strong light that you can lean into and that we're all taking turns. So I'm in a good place right now. You all can lean into me. Okay. And there's going to be other people in your world that you can lean into. And then we'll trade. I'm going to be a mess someday and I'll lean into you. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Jalpa. Thank you so much, Heather Ash. Really, really amazing session. I think it gives us a little bit of breathing room. I think it kind of centered us. So thank you for that. And I would like to thank all the partners that made this possible. Cosmic Heart Gallery, Humans for Humanity, Yogi Impressions, and Hierophant Publishing. And with that, we wish you a very good night. Please stay safe. Please be safe. Please double mask. Please do whatever it can. And like what Heather said, lean in. Lean into where you will find the strength. And Hetrash, a special thank you and gratitude to you, you know, for connecting to us, you know, at these times. And you've given us such beautiful tools. I think everybody in the audience, I can see so many messages in the chat, you know, by connecting to our warrior goddess power, our friends, uh, you know, we can all rebirth ourselves inside out. And our own presence and personal transformation is going to be a gift to ourselves and to everyone around us. Lots of love to each of you, each and every one of you. Lots of good health. And Hetrash, immense, immense gratitude. Thank you, Thanks Jalpa, to everyone. so much. Thank you, loves.